Good morning. Happy Monday. Today is a fun feast day in Advent of St. Nicholas of Mira, sometimes of Bari, depending on who you ask. Anyway, talk more about that later. Though today is Monday, and so Anthony Shumway is giving the reflection because on Monday, that's what we do. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Sorry we didn't have coffee yesterday. I was driving around. Sundays are big days. All right, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. May our prayer of petition rise before you. We pray, O Lord, that with purity unblemished, we, your servants, may come as we desire to celebrate the great mystery of the incarnation of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steep will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abodes where jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and the peppery. A highway will be there called the holy way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go up to be met upon it. It is for those with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion seeing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our God will come to save us. Our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Our God will come to save us. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from the heaven. Our God will come to save us. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. 
our God will come to save us. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, the King will come, the Lord of the earth, and he himself will lift the yoke of our captivity. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there, and the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence, but not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God, and struck with awe, they said, we have seen incredible things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Real fast, today is St. Nicholas Day, <clears throat> a day of the saint who is famous for giving gifts. A lot to say about that, but really that's all I'm going to say because it's not my day to talk. Today it's Anthony's Day. So please take it away. All right. Thank you, Father. I'm going to bring St. Nicholas in a little bit today, but I thought today's gospel is one of those gospels that kind of make me go, huh? There's so much going on, and it's very easily easy to get kind of lost in the story. I mean, somebody who's so faithful who wants to be healed and believes so much, opening up somebody else's roof to lower down their friend. We don't ever hear about the owner of the home, right? All we hear about is the person coming in and like ripping open the roof and lowering the person down. And, and it's like, okay, this is kind of where a lot of times I get hung up. And it's like, you know, what else is going on in this room? I mean, there's a ton of other people. We hear about the Pharisees and, and, and the scribes who are there. And what a sight for them to be able to behold as well. I mean, there's probably a big crowd as well. I mean, we hear in other gospels that the, there's a vast crowd and so they can't get through. And so they, the people come and open the roof because of that. But one of the things that's amazing here uh, that if we get hung up on that, that we don't ever get to, is the blasphemy that is said, or at least according to the Pharisees, the blasphemy that is said, right? And that is, Jesus is saying, your sins are forgiven. In the Jewish mind, only God can forgive sin. And so, this is one of those times where Jesus is blatantly saying that he is God, but he's not saying those words, right? He's, he never comes out and says, I am God, but he does say, I forgive your sins. Your sins are forgiven, right? And that is something that is extraordinary. Why is it that the Israelites, the Jewish people, are so hesitant to follow Jesus? 
every time we we talk about this, the 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 Pharisees are not happy with Jesus, right? One of the things in the RCIA class that we were talking about last week is the Messiah. And I thought, let's talk about that for a minute because quite honestly, it's very easy to forget what it is, who, you know, what Messiah means, who the Messiah was expected to be and why Jesus was not really accepted. So who was the Messiah supposed to be? Well, according to Israelite, the Israel's like, yeah, um, tradition, he was going to be a great warrior. Right? He was going to come into Rome with a vast army, and he was going to overthrow the Roman Empire and all those that are not Israelites and take over the world, and they would become the rightful leaders of the world, and all the oppression would be forgotten, and they would become, you know, the chosen people that they were told they were going to be. So that's what they're expecting. They're expecting this, you know, in my imagination, this big buff Roman guy, and it, which doesn't make sense at all, because why would he be Roman? But, you know, that's just kind of where my mind goes. And it's just, but it's just like, you know, this giant warrior who comes in and just like goes up to Caesar and just kind of like throws him out of the chair and is like, hey, this is my chair now go away. And that's not what Jesus does, right? Jesus is very different. He's very soft. He has his moments of anger. He has his moments where there is aggression that comes out, but he doesn't overthrow anybody, right? He doesn't come in and he doesn't take Pontius Pilate and throw him to the crowd. He doesn't come in and to the chief priests and throw them out of the temple. He comes in and just talks to them. He changes the way that they're trying to think of things to better understand. He's very peaceful. The Israelites were not expecting this. Even more so, and even more appropriately appropriate for the Advent season. We'll hear in a couple of weeks the story of the Nativity. And even Harold himself, when he hears about the Messiah, he thinks the same thing. It's going to be this great warrior, which is why he's so quite frightened. He thinks that the prophecy is about to be fulfilled, that he is going to have to fight a battle. And then when he hears that it's just an infant child, someone who is defenseless, who requires the help of his mother, just like any infant would, he thinks that he can nip this prophecy in the butt, so to say. And that's why he kills all of those infants, any child under three, just to make sure he gets everyone. But of course, we know that the Holy Family goes and flights to uh, runs away to Egypt. And so they're safe. But it's the audacity that Herod thinks that he can mess with the prophecy, that he can overthrow what it is that's supposed to happen. Jesus says in the gospel that he is the son of man. And this is an important part of, of who Jesus is. And this is where St. Nicholas comes in. Jesus has to be fully man and fully God for redemption to take place. Because if he was only God, then our participation as humans would not be part of it. That's one of the reasons why Jesus became man, why God became man, so that we could participate in that redemption. And there was a heretic called Arius who said that 
Jesus was not man. Well, if, like I said, if Jesus wasn't man, then not man, not, sorry, God, sorry, not God. There we go, backwards. <laughs> uh, was not God, then he couldn't do the redeeming act because sin, as much as we say when we repent, the sins are forgiven and that we make ret ret restitution for those sins. When we sin against God, we can't really truly make amends for those things because it's, it's such a great offense that so only God can make that, uh, rest that make that atonement. So Nicholas comes in and it, it's in this, the council of Nicaea, right? When Arius was making all, you know, they were trying to figure out everything and, and understand everything that was going on in the councils and understand Jesus and, and a little bit better. And Arius is refusing to acknowledge uh, the divinity of Christ. And, and Nicholas finally just comes up and just goes, <laughs> which, which is, I think, fantastic. But, you know, it does, that's not how it always happens. But we, we always, the, the Catholic Church is full of great stories like that. And just one of the many. And, it, and it's, it's one of those that, that's one of those things that St. Nicholas is known for. Among, I mean, this guy has done so many other things. He's, he was a wonderful man. And, and quite honestly, we lose it because we have created St. Uh, Santa Claus to kind of replace St. Nicholas. And so some of the attributes of Santa Claus are actually St. Nicholas's and some of them are other cultures who have, you know, kind of made him this magical creature who is kind of human, kind of not, kind of an elf, kind of not, kind of whatever. But I mean, Santa Claus, of course, is loosely based on Nicholas, although Nicholas was a bishop and not married and he didn't live in, you know, the North Pole and have reindeer. He lived in Asia Minor and it's, you know, not as cold there and snowy and whatever. Uh, but he was, a, he was a guy who gave and loved and, and was a great example of the defender of a faith. He was a great teacher and somebody that we can look up to and, you know, follow in his ways. I don't think we should go around punching people, but you get, you know, I hope you kind of get what I mean. He, he shared so much love of Christ with others. And that part of it, at least, we can emulate and we can partake in and we can share with others. You know, be willing to stand up for the truth that we know is correct to what cost, to any cost, right? So the Messiah came. He was not who the Israelites, the Jewish people expected. He was vastly different. And I think that's something that we have to remember that as we continue on in this Advent journey is that we have to be open to understand and to experience Christ in different ways than what we would expect to. Because he's going to come in and affect our lives in wonderful ways. And sometimes it's going to seem like I was expecting something different. I was expecting you to be this big warrior. But instead, you're this infant that needs to be nurtured and cared for. And that is what becomes that relationship being open to understanding and loving each other. Kind of just like Jesus is actually an infant and we are the one caring for him before he ultimately cares for us always. Thank you guys. Have a good week. God bless. Thank you, Anthony. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us.
for the Holy Father's prayer intention this month. For catechists summoned to announce the word of God. May they be witness, witnesses with courage and creativity and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, that, that as they gather, they may do so lovingly to celebrate the joy of Christ's birth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that as we continue to prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas, we keep our focus on him who is the source of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this despairing, that those who struggle or are alone this se season may not be forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For who and what else shall we pray for? For the intercession of St. Lana, for all our friends and family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your mercy, Lord. Protect us in all dangers through the prayers of the Bishop St. Nicholas, that the way of salvation may lie open before us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you forever. Amen. Good times. And pray for snow tonight. And the other days this week. <clears throat> All right, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. That's it. Everyone have a lovely week. See you tomorrow. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.